Hello, it's Sammy. Uh, we are continuing with Math 10. And today it's multiplying polynomials. So basically we're looking at multiplying a binomial by a binomial. Binomial means two terms. Um, and, and also we're looking at squaring a binomial and also multiplying a binomial into a trinomial. Uh, so what, what we do when we multiply in a binomial by a, bi by a binomial, we do what we call foiling. What does that mean? It means what you do, you take the first term here, the 5x, multiply it into here, and multiply it into here. We call this the property of distribution as well. So you take the 5x, multiply it in the first term here and multiply it into the second term. And then you take the second term in the first brackets, which is the negative two, multiply it here and multiply it there. So let's do it step by step here. Five X times six X is 30 X squared. And five X times positive one is plus five X. Negative two times six X is negative 12 X. And negative two times positive one is negative two. Now you don't stop here. And why we don't stop here? Because we have like terms. If you remember from last session that we have these two are like terms. So therefore we're gonna go 30 X squared and we have five minus 12, which is negative seven X minus two. And that's the answer for the first one. Now we're gonna do the second one. And the second one, what I want you to notice here is that this binomial and this binomial, they are exactly the same except the sign in the middle. One is negative and one is positive. When that happens, we call this the difference of squares. So there's shortcuts that you could take when it's like this. So if you have the same thing here, the same thing here, except with the opposite sign in the middle, you could just take a shortcut by multiplying three X by three X and you get nine X squared and multiplying negative seven by positive seven and you get negative 49. You could only do that when you have this kind of situation. Now, why we can do this? Why, why shouldn't we just foil the same way that we did in the, in the last one? As a matter of fact, we are doing the same thing, but let's just take this and foil it, okay? So if we take three X, minus seven and three X plus seven and foil it here and here, we're gonna get nine X squared and then three times seven is plus 21 X. And now take the negative seven, foil it here and here, we're gonna get negative seven times three is negative 21 X and negative seven times seven is negative 49. Now, if you're collecting like terms, these two are like terms. And if, as you see, 21 minus 21 will cancel. So whenever we have the same binomial multiplied by the same binomial, except the sign in the middle is the opposite, then you could take the shortcut because as we see, when we foiled it, we ended up with nine X squared minus 49 anyways. Now, how about if this was a plus and this was a plus, then you cannot take the shortcut that we did here but there's another shortcut that you could do if that's the case. Uh, and that leads us to question number three. So four X minus three Y all squared. What it means, it means four X minus three Y times four X minus three Y. And this, as a matter of fact, is similar to this because we have the same thing, except here we have opposite signs. So we were able to take the shortcut that we did here but in this one, they have the same sign. So it's not the same shortcut that we do with this, okay? So I'm gonna write this here and I'm gonna show you and prove to you that it works when we uh, take the shortcut, but here we're gonna show you how to do it without the shortcut. So first let's just take the shortcut with this one. So pay attention now, what's the shortcut? Okay, the shortcut is first thing, take the four X here and square it. And then 
you multiply this two into the four X and into the negative three Y. So two times four X is eight X times negative three Y, eight X times negative three Y is negative 24 X Y. And then after that, you take the negative three Y and you square it. So therefore you ended up with 16 X squared minus 24 X Y and negative when you square it becomes plus and three Y squared when you square them three squared is nine and you get Y squared. So I go four X squared will be 16 X squared and then multiply the two into the four X times the negative three Y gives us this. And then you square the negative three Y, negative three squared is plus nine and Y squared is Y squared. So you, you don't have to do this step. You could just do it in your head and go straight into this. So that's the shortcut. Someone might argue that the shortcut maybe doesn't work. Now let's go and foil this and see if it works. Okay, so four X times four X, you get 16 X squared. And then 4x times negative 3y is negative 12xy. And ne negative 3y times 4x is negative 12yx or xy is the same thing. And negative 3y times negative 3y is plus 9y squared. Now, if you collect like terms here, you end up with 16x squared minus 12 minus 12 is negative 24xy. And then plus 9y squared, which is this. So now we know it works. Now let's do question number four here. So here we're foiling a binomial into a trinomial. So you do the same thing, except here we get two branches going out. Here we're gonna get one, two, and then three branches going out. And that's gonna give us uh, three X times two X squared is six X cubed and three X times positive three X is plus nine X squared and three X times negative four is negative 12 X. Now also the negative one, we're gonna foil it into here, into there and into there. As you see, we're getting three branches coming out. Negative one times two X squared is negative two X squared. Negative one times positive three X is negative three X. And negative one times negative four is plus four. And this equals six X cubed. And these are like terms. So nine X squared minus two X squared is seven X squared. This is cubed, sorry, I, I wrote squared there. And these are like terms right here, the negative 12 X and the minus three X. So negative 12 minus three X is negative 15 X. The four, we don't have any like terms with it, so just plus four at the end. And that's exactly how you foil a binomial into a trinomial. Okay. So now I'm just gonna introduce you to the greatest common factor for the next lesson, but I'm just gonna give you a little introduction to that. So when we tackle the greatest common factor next week, you'll know exactly what to do. My method is a little bit different. But if you apply it, in my opinion, it's much better than how they teach it in school. To understand common factors, you must understand the theorem of distribution. So something we did before in the last lesson. So if I have three and I have brackets like this, what it means, it means you have to distribute the three into here, into there, and into there. So this will give you three X squared and three times negative two is negative six X and three times plus four is positive 12. And now in here, if I'm gonna do this question, I have to foil this into here or distribute into here, into there, and into there. So I have two X times five X squared is 10 X cubed plus two times three is six and X times X is just X squared and two X times negative seven is negative 14 X. 
So if you want to take out the greatest common factor, so here we're talking about the greatest common factor. What you're doing, you're doing the opposite of distribution. So what you're doing, you're taking this and you're going this way and making it this. So that's what the greatest common factor is. So again, this is distribution. But if you have this and you wanna, they ask you to take the greatest common factor, you're going and writing it like this. So how does that work? So if I'm giving you the equation 3x squared minus 6x plus 12, and I said, factor this or take out the greatest common factor. Then you look at the numbers here and you see what's the greatest number that goes into all of the three, six and 12. And of course it is three because three goes into all of them. But that means you could divide all of this numbers by three. And that's the greatest common factor here. So again, the keyword I said that once you take out the greatest common factor, you take it out. Why? Because all of this, or it's the greatest number that you could divide all of these terms, the three terms by, so it's the three. So when you take out the greatest common factor and you wanna see what you're gonna write inside here, all you need to do, just take the first term, three X squared, divide it by three. So when you divide three X squared by three, the threes will cancel and you'll end up with X squared. And then you have your minus sign here. If you take six X and divide it by three, six divided by three is two. And the X, you're not dividing by X, so the X is just gonna stay the same. And then you have your plus sign. And then you go 12 divided by three, which gives you four. And that is your answer. And you see how this is exactly like this. So let's do this to here. So this question here, let's use a different color. If we have 10, x cubed plus 6x squared minus 14x. And I say take out the greatest common factor. So again, we look for the largest number that both of these divide by. We look for the largest number that all these three terms divide by. So when I'm looking here, usually I go to the smallest number, okay? And I see what goes into the smallest number. Six goes into six, but we cannot divide the other numbers by six. Then the next number that we could divide the smallest number by is three, because six divides by three, but we cannot do that to the 10 and 14. What's the next number that six divides by? It's two. 14 and 10 divides by two. So two is my greatest common factor, but it doesn't stop here though. When you have variables in the, in the three terms, See here, we didn't have variables in the three terms, so you cannot take out the variable as a greatest common factor. But when you have variables in the three terms, which is the x's, then you look at the x with the lowest exponent, which is x to the one here, and that would be your greatest common factor as far as the variables are concerned. So it will be two x, that's your greatest common factor. Again, the way I do it, I take the 10 x cubed divided by two x, 10 divided by two is five, x cubed divided by x is x squared. You remember we minus the exponents. Then my plus sign that's here and then I go six x squared divided by two x, I get three x because x squared divided by x would just give me x. And then my minus 14 divided by two is seven. x divided by x, they cancel each other out and that's what you get. So again, we took this and we made it into this. So again, when we distributed the two X, we got this, which is that. And then if we want to take out the greatest common factor, which is the two X, and then we divide it here and we get this. So again, the property of distribution is the opposite of the greatest common factor. So you must relate the two to understand how things work. Okay. Hey, and if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel. More videos to come. Promise. I'm going to finish all the math 10 in this series. And then I'm going to move on to math 11. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye-bye.